This is Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Stock Talk, a series I make whenever I feel it's necessary, where we cover some exciting news and price action in regard to some of the stocks I've been talking about on the channel. In today's case, we are touching on Tesla and workhorse stocks, two very opposing sides of the bear bull spectrum, in my opinion. So I'm excited to get into these with you guys. Before we do get into it at all, though, I need to let you guys know that at this point in time, I am technically bearish on Tesla. So if you are a Tesla moon boy, um, you might want to peace out right now. All right. But that said, I do have some articles to share with you guys of course we'll look at the chart so just tesla and workhorse again we're not touching on any of the other ev plays today these are the only two i really have my focus on right now i'm not saying the other ones won't do well won't tank i don't know but we're not looking at them today we're just focusing on tesla and workhorse okay and uh same goes for news of course huge news in tesla as of friday market close after market close i should say so tesla falls after anticipated s p inclusion proves Ill illusory it's a tough word. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Illusory, like elusive, I'm I'm pretty sure. Okay, but huge news did drop Tesla after hours. We will take a look. This is not currently showing after hours price action. I will turn that on once we get to the charts. Um, we will then touch on workhorse stock. Again, you guys, very opposing sides of the bearable spectrum. I'm personally very bearish on Tesla right now. I'm very bullish on workhorse though for both fundamentally and technically. I think workhorse is, um, is a great stock. I think it's a great actually value stock in a market full of shiny objects. I think workhorse is really really truly warrants the growth that it's seen it's already up what like 600 percent or something as of this year so it's seen crazy growth but i do think that it, at, at like a 1.8 billion dollar company workhorse still has so much room for growth considering tesla uh is no longer at 400 billion i'm not sure what it's floating at now we will take a look at that but i think workhorse has a lot of room to grow especially considering it's disrupting um the, the delivery industry okay which is a huge niche that is just asking to be disrupted okay so we will cover a few articles touching on workhorse as well very bullish articles there and once again we will take a look at the charts before we get into that i will ask you guys to please give the video a like if you do go on to gain value from it subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and of course check out my complete portfolio and daily newsletter if you want to know my exact call options put options whatever positions i may have on tesla workhorse as well as literally every other position in my more portfolio and get a newsletter for me talking about the trades I make every trading day during market hours, okay? So first link in the description, appreciate it if you do check it out. If not, no worries, let's get into Tesla. Okay, so, uh, I mean, you guys know the deal. We gotta cover the fundamentals prior to the technicals. And then, um, yeah, I'm excited to show you guys what I'm thinking about the charts. Hyperdrive, Bloomberg, Tesla falls after anticipated S&P inclusion proves illusory. Tesla shares it tumbled as much as 8% in post-market trading Friday as investors who contributed to its jaw-dropping rally this year in anticipation it may join the S&P 500 index will have to wait for another day. Elon Musk, electric vehicle car maker, um, was widely expected to be added to prestigious benchmark after it posted a fourth consecutive quarterly profit in July, clearing the last major hurdle for consideration by the S&P Dow Jones indices, which oversees the gauge. Some, including Credit Suisse analyst Dan Levy, said the move might be announced Friday in order for the stock to begin trading as the S&P component for this, this month, although he added that there was no guarantee a decision was imminent. Instead, online retailer Etsy, semiconductor equipment manufacturer Teradyne, and medical technology company Catalan were added, replacing H&R Block, Cody Inc., and Kohl's. I mean, those poor relic industries. Etsy jumped 4.8%. Um, Post-market Teradyne climbed 3%. I actually do like Teradyne as an investment. I will do a stock. I will maybe do an investment on Teradyne um, individually in the future. And Catalan rose 3.6% on the news. S&P Dow Jones indices, which oversees the index, rebalances it on a quarterly basis, but its components can shift more frequently, spokesman Ray McConville, McCon McConville said by phone on Friday. The index committee can make a change to the index at any time, he said. The index's decision to not to include Tesla, at least for now, may have rested on questions about the automaker's profitability metrics and murky full-year forecast. Dan Ives, a Wedbush Securities analyst with a neutral rating on the stock, wrote in a research note Friday, Tesla not getting into the S&P 500 will be a head scratcher to the bulls that viewed this as virtually a lock given all the parameters met he wrote so again you guys this is the thing about tesla again i love tesla as a company i need to reiterate that as many times as i can i think tesla is one of the most revolutionary companies in the world i think they're one of the most cool like the coolest companies in the world as well like their cars are sick that's that's <laughs> inarguable but it just doesn't warrant the growth that we've seen in Tesla. I will zoom out. We will look at the macro time frame, but we will just focus on this now. And again, you guys, Tesla, we have covered this in previous stock talks. Tesla is not profitable off selling cars. Their car business isn't profitable. They make money off tax credits that they sell to other auto manufacturers. And as these other auto manufacturers make not as good cars as Tesla, as electric cars, I'm saying at least, um, 
they will start to make them and they will steal some market share and they won't need those tax credits anymore and tesla will lose that lose that area of profitability which is the only reason they're profitable right now um that's a fact okay so i'm not saying they're not going to scale their business their car business i'm not saying they're, they're they can scale their data technology side business i'm not saying they can scale in many other ways but that's just the reality of what's happening right now okay so from a technical perspective we're on the hourly right now let's uh damn it let's move my fat head and then show you guys the extended hours trading to show you guys that eight percent drop i mean you guys don't really need to see it but i'll just show you guys it uh i mean if you if you want to see it but there it is eight percent down surprisingly earlier in the day in the trading day we did see tesla on friday tank absolutely tank down to a low of like 370 bucks so it did come up to this it did perfectly oh not perfectly it came up to this area where it gapped up so we talked about uh, gap trading in yesterday's video if you guys caught that but gaps do serve as a pretty solid indicator of where a stock might correct to it acts as like a a slightly more significant area of either support or resistance um, sometimes okay so it did come down exactly to this area where it gapped up uh, in late august um, then bounced up really recovered over the course of the day on friday and then obviously after hours here as you can see in that blue box right there that blue uh, that little blue bar did drop eight percent on the news that the s p uh, uh dropped it from from uh, its its index which again you guys you have that's why you have to be careful if you are betting on things like that you never know and i i was i was skeptical about tesla again like like it said in the article this kind of shaky profitability metrics which is exactly what i talked about and the s p is a pretty like strict they're they've been around forever they're pretty strict um i mean they're a pretty strict group of people so that's why that's why they're so highly i mean that's why their index is so highly regarded is because they're good at picking uh, what they feel is fair value and good stocks to have within their index okay so tesla from a technical perspective right now on a short term time frame it kind of does look to me like we could be printing somewhat of a head and shoulders this is a very low dip for the right shoulder but you can see here just briefly i mean left shoulder head we might form a right shoulder here so it's not i mean tesla isn't looking good sorry you guys my mouse has been bugging um but tesla not looking good right now you can see once again from a short-term time perspective or time frame, remember we are on the hourly right now. Let's zoom out to the four hourly. So hourly potential head and shoulders playing out here. I mean, we could look at this on the hourly too, but you guys know I like the four hours. So let's check that out. Um, so four hours right here. I don't know why my mouse does that. It, it bugs out for like 10 seconds and then works again. Okay, so you can see here, you guys, Tesla, you can't look at no rational individual can look at this chart especially when we zoom out like this and this is on the four hours so remember like just in december of last year tesla i mean the stock split so that kind of messes up just what you'd remember to be but when we're when was tesla at like a hundred dollars so tesla was at a hundred dollars at the beginning of this year they reached a high of five hundred dollars so they five x since the beginning of the year with i mean the, the the metrics the the fundamental metrics of tesla have not gotten significantly better since the beginning of the year tesla was a great company at the beginning of the year it's still a great company but the value uh the price of the stock does not i mean it, the the fundamentals don't warrant a 5x in share price okay so no rational individual can look at this look at this chart and say that this is in a bubble once again you guys i've i've my career is built on trading bubbles and i know a bubble when i see when this is 100 a bubble and i do think that this bubble has has popped to what extent i don't know could it keep continue rallying up for sure what do i think is going to happen is i think it's very likely that we see tesla come down and test this green line of support that it's used since june okay so since the end of june it has used this as i mean this is pretty much the only support uh line of support that it has the only line you can draw up here uh but i think it makes perfect sense because it does also perfectly coincide with these with these previous highs that it set in mid july so it did close three four hour it, it did spend three four hour candles over here i don't know what the daily candles look like it probably spends uh regardless it spent a good amount of time around this price point at around 330 dollars okay so this uptrend line perfectly coincides with this area it, it does intersect at about the 15th of september so next week sometime what is it the fourth so maybe in the, in the coming week or so we will see it pull back to this area if it doesn't happen faster you guys because remember tesla has seen such unprecedented growth such just straight 90 degree growth that it could fall fast as well so be careful like things fall faster trust me you guys once again i've played many bubbles in my day things fall way faster than they go up okay and that's why you have to be very careful especially with so many new traders i said this yesterday but i'll say it again 
it's great that new traders are in the market. It's great that individuals are financially educating themselves and making themselves more financially literate, caring about their, their future and the, their potential wealth over, <laughs> over the course of their lifetime. But that also creates for very uh, inexperienced, very weak handed traders who don't understand how to properly stomach red. Okay. And when you have that, along with a company that's bubbled up so ridiculously much, you get significant corrections. And that's why I think this, um, I think we'll probably see a bounce over here. Okay. So what I think is likely to happen is we see a bounce right here. We might rally up a little bit, maybe to like bounce a few percent up or something, and then ultimately come back down. This is my ultimate price price target on the low end for Tesla to these areas where it spent a lot of time. It set these two highs here back in February. It hasn't retested those since this rally. And that's just how a lot of this, like it's, it's very common when you see bubbles like this for them to retest previous highs. Okay. And Tesla did set a few highs around this point. It used it as a significant area of support um, back in June. So it wouldn't make sense to me to see Tesla come all the way back down to these levels. Again, when does it happen? I don't know, but I think it's gonna end up I have, I have positioned myself with that belief, okay? So again, you guys, I'm sorry if you're a Tesla bull. I love Tesla. I love Tesla as a company. It's just overvalued and it does need to correct, all right? So that said, let's move on to Workhorse stock. You know what? We'll take, we'll just bring up the chart real quick just to give you guys an idea of what I'm thinking. So Workhorse, once again, was, uh, if, if you guys watch my top, top three stocks of September video, Workhorse was my number one pick. I mean, I, I said it was no in no, like, precise order but workhorse was the first one i covered very bullish on workhorse from a from a technical perspective like it, it is playing out it is um it has confirmed this bull flag that i was saying might play out so bull flag once again obviously traditionally bullish pattern uh you got the flagpole right here followed by descending triangle once it reaches the end of that triangle it will likely break out which it has sometimes it happens before because people are expecting uh the bull flag to play out and it beats them to it okay so you know that's just you gotta think you gotta be one step ahead right um, did break out. We are seeing a breakout here. I think it is very likely we are seeing a second wave in workhorse. It's very reassuring that workhorse is continuing has continued to do well over the past couple of days, aside from Tesla really tanking. Okay, so you know, like this is what I've been saying a lot. Like the if if some of these giants, if some of these tech giants pop, if the bubbles pop and capital flows out of them, then either people get scared of the entire sector and just we see another liquidity crisis and it just everything gets wiped out or capital flows out of Tesla, out of these out of these big dogs, out of the leaders of the sector and into other smaller players, more promising players with more room for growth um, that are in the sector as well. So obviously Tesla and Workhorse, not direct competitors. Workhorse is attacking a, a very what I believe to be a very bullish, and this is what I talked about in the top three stocks argument, uh, a very disruptable industry, which is delivery, especially in this new economy. Um, I mean, online e-commerce is growing at an extremely rapid pace. And obviously this, this Corona economy has sped up the development of that, of, of that evolution. So workhorse is really, just really po poised to, to disrupt this industry. So let's go over some of this quick. I will just read you guys a few paragraphs here. So uh, shares of workhorse group, are rising today. This is August 31st. So this was earlier this week, but I mean, still relevant, still very good news are rising up 12.3% as of uh, whatever after the maker of electric de uh, delivery vans announced a strategic deal with Japanese electronics giant Hitachi aimed at helping workhorse execute his growth plan. So what under the deals, Hitachi America will assess workhorse manufacturing supply chain and other operational capabilities and provide recommendations to get them the best in class levels of, as workhorse ramps up production of its new C series package delivery vans. Right. So workhorse along with that, is this the one that talked to, no, this is the one that talked about drones, you know, sorry, here, let's go to this one and then we'll take a look back at the charts and then, and then call it. Okay. So workhorse has edge among EV delivery trucks. Oppenheimer says, all right, while workhorse, sorry, guys, I forgot to, we don't need to highlight this while workhorse group Inc has strong long-term growth prospects. There are multiple catalysts that lend near-term upside to its stock. According to Oppenheimer, the workhorse analyst Colin Roosh initiated coverage of workhorse on an outperform rating and price target of $23. The workhorse thesis, the company's electric last mile delivery truck platform offers the benefit of vehicle design iterations, as well as a substantial competitive advantage of supporting a flexible manufacturing model. He added that workhorse vehicles serve a, serve a market estimated at around $18 billion has customers who are unwilling to compromise on service. The analyst believes that a company is a strong in a strong position to win the U.S. Postal Service contract for upgrading its delivery fleet of 165,000 vehicles valued at $6.3 billion. That would be a huge deal. Once again, you guys considering Workhorse, 
So we'll call that there, you guys. That's all you need to know. But I mean, similar to the reasons I said uh, in my in my brief summary for why I'm bullish on workhorse fundamentally, they're disrupting a huge multi multi billion dollar industry in, in logistics and shipping. And if they if they can nail that deal with USPS, I mean, that's like like the guy just said, a seven billion dollar deal ne nearly. Workhorse has just breached the two billion dollar market cap mark. I mean, that deal alone is over three x its current market cap. So. That's a that's a huge deal and it's just it's just bullish not necessarily like not even that directly but like i was saying in the beginning workhorse is such a good and rare value actual value play in my mind and this is poised to disrupt such a huge industry with such a small market cap so i feel you guys know i love uh small market cap stocks with with what i believe to be asymmetric upside i believe the upside for workhorse at this point is just so much significantly greater than uh, the downside so that's why again you guys i'm very, i'm heavily positioned i shouldn't say heavily but I'm, I'm very well positioned in workhorse right now i do see big things for them not only in the near term near, near term future but in the very long term future as well so this is definitely if you're looking for a set it and forget it stock i think workhorse um, I, mean, I mean i'm not not even saying tesla is is a bad set of forget it stock I, I believe if you're if you're willing to sit on tesla for like five ten years great buy obviously not financial advice you guys know that but it, i mean i i don't think like workhorse is like light years beyond a better value investment buy if you're willing to sit on something for for years at a time so i personally think workhorse is is a great buy i do have it in my stock portfolio i'll just tell you guys that much but i do have call options call options on it as well near-term bullish and long-term bullish as well i do think we're seeing that second wave now that it has broken out of this bull flag and i do think we will see new highs in workhorse volume is low here which i mean obviously is a uh, is never good it, it was just so ridiculously high when it ran up here but low volume isn't always a bad thing okay and i do think that workhorse is definitely poised with with some of the other articles i've been seeing um out there too i didn't bring up all that i uh that i've wanted to cover I, I didn't feel like they were necessary to cover but i've just been seeing a lot of bullish momentum for workhorse fundamentally and obviously that makes me more bullish on the stock itself okay so uh once again you guys please let me know down below what you think about tesla and workhorse if you guys are bullish bearish what you're thinking always love learning from you guys always love talking shop with you guys so i'll see you in the comments down below once again if you want to know my exact call options put options stock positions cryptocurrencies if you're into it complete portfolio daily newsletter i do send out a newsletter every day talking about the trades i made that day rationalizing my thoughts as well as giving you guys my more real-time thoughts about the markets overall okay so i appreciate it if you check it out if not no worries and uh yeah look forward to talking to you guys down below so until next time you guys always remember take action make waves peace